Welcome back to another track test video here at Toronto Motorsports Park, where today I'm test driving this right-hand drive Toyota Altezza RS200. This is our buddy Mike, everyone, who uh, has been known to work occasionally at Envy Auto. Yep. And he works right up the road hill, uh, right up the road hill. He, he works right up the road at Red Hill Toyota now. I do. You're a tech there? Yep. Tuning apprentice. apprentice. I, I apologize. He'll be a full tech soon. And he has some really cool cars. As a matter of fact, you've got a badass Evo Time Attack car. Yeah, I have an Evo 7 uh, GSR from Japan. Right hand that used, drive. That I use for Time Attack. He's got a thing for right hand drive cars, apparently, because this thing is a very sweet right hand drive Altezza RS200 with a Beams motor, everybody. A Beams! I love myself a beam, so we couldn't we couldn't help ourselves but go for a rip in it. This is your like daily driver. Yeah, I use it for work and whatever, and just to have occasional time like fun at the track. So yeah, you just happen to be out here, and we thought, why not go for a rip? And it's basically stock, right? It's 100% stock. It's on uh, like an upgraded tire, a Firehawk. Yep, uh, Fire uh, Indy Stone 500. Right, which I've never tried. I'm interested to try out these Indy 500 tires because a lot of guys like them. They're affordable and they're quite grippy. Yeah, and they last super long. Tell us a bit about the car. The Beams motor is rated to 207 horsepower. If, I, if I'm correct, yep. I do own one, so I should know. And other than that, how does it differ from like the IS300s that we see here? Well, I know that the 2J in that has like the lower compression. It's a lot heavier up front. So this actually from the factory has a 50-50 weight distribution. Oh, nice. So that's really nice, especially for going down on the track. It's a really high revving engine, and it's a lot of fun to drive. And you've changed the steering wheel out? You've got like a deep dish? It actually came with that steering wheel, so it has like this fake looking Momo replica wheel with a nice TRD button okay. for the horn and a really nice, really rare TRD shift knob. I saw the shift knob, Pete was admiring too, and it's got this TRD lip kit too, yes. right? This is actually a factory lip kit that you can get from Japan. Well, I'll, I'll be gentle to your lip kit and I'll uh, I'll have to remember how to shift with my left hand. It's been a while since I've driven anything right hand drive, so I'm excited to go and turn a few laps here for you guys and see what kind of lap time we get. I don't expect it's going to be crazy fast, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. All right, everybody. <laughs> I'm looking over here for the camera, but you're over there because I'm on the wrong side of the car. What is going on? This is so weird. I uh, have not driven a right-hand drive car for quite some time. I think I might have been in reverse there for a minute. As a matter of fact, I think the last time I drove right-hand drive was when Pete and I were in Japan for the Tokyo Auto Salon back in like 2008, I want to say. And we went to an HKS day that Yokohama Tire invited us to, and we got to drive a bunch of really cool cars built by different tuning houses, including HKS. So that's uh, over a decade ago, everybody. So it's gonna take me a minute to figure out the gearbox and just, you know, like shifting with my left hand and all that. But it is a J160 gearbox, the same six, six speed that I have attached to my beams in my Celica. So then again, I've only driven my Celica once. So it's not like I'm a J160 expert by any means. And uh, like we talked about with Mike, it's basically a stock car, so it's not going to be a rocket ship. I've tested a stock IS300 around here, which of course has a 2J. It had a 5-speed manual, not a 6-speed manual, and it had the LSD rear end, which is really, really rare here in North America in the IS300s. This car, of course, being the RS200, the, kind of like the hot boy version of this car in Japan, has the LSD. And wow, it's so weird to be on the inside of turn one and see the curb there. Right-hand drive, you're messing with my head. So, I'm going to take a minute just to familiarize myself with the car and what it's like to drive on the wrong side. I don't know what to do. It's, uh, it's so hilarious. Your brain just gets used to being on that side and shifting with the, your right hand and everything. And uh, <laughs> This is going to be a fun ride, but in any case, like I was saying with that IS300, I tested a basically a stock one around here and I think I did about a 1 minute 30 second lap time. So. I'm curious to see if I can uh, do a little better than that in this. I might be pressing my luck to think I can given the fact that I'm uh, using the wrong hand to shift and just feeling completely out of place on this side of the car. It's kind of hilarious. Wow, this Beams motor feels good though. I'm not going to lie, it feels so different than the that big kind of lazy naturally aspirated uh, 2J motor that comes in the IS300. It's like that's a nice motor but it has a very flat power band so it's just like it's torquey and it just feels like it accelerates at the same at the same rate all the time so it it's not that it's not fast it just doesn't it doesn't have any zip to it so it maybe feels kind of slower than it is but with this beams being a bit of a rever you 
get more sort of excitement out of it. It feels more alive, maybe, you know? It just, it changes the character of the car quite a bit. So I'm just uh, trying to familiarize myself with the gauges. These Altiza um, clusters are really cool. I've always been a fan of the way they look. The tack is a little small on the left, and Mike was telling me in 02 they went to a bigger tack that's in the middle. Uh, so I think he's going to change that out in the future, which I think is a great idea because having the, the little tack down there on the left is a little bit odd, I think. So future tuning from coming from Houdini on the Daily Driver. And someday we will do a video on his Evo 7 because that thing is really cool. All right, down to second gear here. Wow, it's so weird to experience this racetrack that I've done so many laps on in left-hand drive cars. It's just so strange to experience it sitting on the other side of the car. It's really weirding me out, but I'm starting to get a bit of a feel for it. Oh yeah, a little drift there. A little uh, rear wheel peel happening. We're testing out these Indy 500 Firestone Firehawks, a tire I've never tried before, but a lot of guys like because they're inexpensive and yet apparently quite grippy and so far they're hanging in there pretty good stock suspension is soft a little bouncy i mean it's a 98 <laughs> the shocks have seen better days uh, i think a little uh fortune 500 upgrade on this thing wouldn't be a bad call make maybe that's a uh, future mod for you what do you say buddy oh it's got long gearing i'm only using third gear on the front straight it's so cool being on the inside of the car on turn one. I love that. It's like they geared this thing for the Autobahn though. Like I'm doing 140K in third gear. That's so weird. All right, we'll go down a second here. It definitely has understeer, but let's be honest, this is a kind of a luxury sedan luxury sports sedan I think is probably the, the fairest way to categorize it and they just definitely did not design it to be a drift car so I got to remember it's on stock suspension it's gonna understeer but look at that we could get a little, a little one wheel peel I guess it should be a two wheel peel but it felt like the diff was kind of open there maybe this car doesn't have an LSD I'll have to talk to Mike about it Beamsy screaming up around here in second gear. So aggressive, Beamsy. I love you. Making such good noises. I do want to put an exhaust on you though and uncork you a little bit. Come on, Beamsy. Give me all you got. All two liters of your 207 horsepower. 3S GE goodness. Just getting to the top of third gear there. I should mention Mike upgraded the brake pads, I think, to a Hawk HP Plus. So the pads are taking a beating and standing up to it quite well. Up the back straight here, all in third gear. It just needs more, it just needs shorter gearing, everyone. I mean, really for a 20 year old car though this thing feels really tight feels really well built oh yeah you can do a little lift throttle oversteer there this car has a lot of potential all right there you have it everyone a 131 flat and I mean that's faster than some new cars we've tested recently so for yeah. a 20 year old car that ain't half bad I mean, you've done a mild brake pad upgrade? That's it, it's got just regular stop tech ones on the exact factory rotor, so. It drives really good. Yeah. It took me a long time to kind of like figure out the mechanics of sitting on the wrong side. And Pete, you gotta take this for a drive afterwards because it's hilarious when you turn in and turn one, you see the curb, the curb's like right there and it's like <laughs> blowing by you. You're like, well, it changes the whole experience Absolutely. of being on the track. It was yeah. really interesting. And wow, I've never driven a car in my life 
that needs a higher final drive more than this car does. Absolutely. Isn't it bizarre, like third gear on the straightaways and then second gear into the couple of slow corners and then it's just That's third it. gear everywhere. When With a high revving motor like that, you'd think they'd put really tight gear spacing yeah. into it, but for whatever reason, maybe fuel efficiency or something? Probably. They give it really long gears. So you were saying it's a 4-1 final drive? It's a 4-1 final drive and then the upgraded one is a 4-3. Okay. And then I'm hopefully going to put a 4-7 in it. So like TRD or somebody makes TRD, a 4-7. Yes. I mean, a 4.7 would just transform this car. Absolutely. It would, it would just let that motor do what it's meant to do and really sing in the RPM, high RPM range. So if this was my car, that's what I would do. And other than that, like put some Fortunato like 500s on here. Yeah. It would it would take a lot of the roly poliness out of it and it would be perfect. So what a great car. Thanks so much for letting me take it for a rip. No problem. It was Anytime. super fun. And uh, I don't know, Pete, I'm pretty stoked on the whole right hand drive thing all of a sudden. It just, it changes the whole way you look at the racetrack. And once you start to get a feel for shifting with your left hand, it's really fun. So, as a matter of fact, if you guys want a right-hand drive car of your own, Mike, you ordered, you ordered this from, was it Craig at Bonsai Rides? By Bonsai Rides. It's like bonsairides.ca, I think it is. Yep. He's in London, Ontario. He is. And if you live in Southern Ontario, he's a really great importer of really clean quality cars. Like this car is beautifully clean and the other cars that we've seen he's imported are very, very nice. So, and he, he obviously is uh, able to source cars direct from Japan. Yep. And then you've even sourced some parts from him. I have. So he even helped me out to get some parts from other auction houses so I can buy small little trinkets. I love all the like KDM stuff. Like I got my cup holder and stuff. Yeah, I love the cup holder. Japan and stuff, so. Yeah. So check him out everybody. And uh, thank you very much for watching this one. We'll see you very soon in another track test video where I may be sitting on the right side or the left. Have to stay tuned to find out. It's got good, good, whoops, I got a pylon. Oh jeez. Just, ah uh, sh murdered that pylon. I gotta pull off here and get this pylon out from underneath me.